now we are heading towards the second session uh, which is uh, by dr ravi kumar mandava let me introduce uh, him so he received his uh, btech in mechanical engineering from uh, acharya nagarjuna university guntur in 2008 further he received his uh, master of engineering in cad cam from uh, andhra university visakhapatnam uh, in the year 2010 later he obtained his uh, phd degree in robotics in the school of uh, mechanical sciences from indian institute of technology bhubaneswar in 2019 Uh, he has 7 years of teaching and research experience at present he is uh, working as assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering at uh, maulana azad national institute of technology bhopal his research area includes leg robotics motion planning uh, uh, agricultural robots manufacturing and soft computing at present uh, he is holding one dst project as a pi with worth of 25 lakh and one isro project as a co pi with the worth of 8.6 lakhs he has published more than 42 technical papers in various national international journals book chapters and conferences he is an active reviewer of various international journals uh, ravi sir it's uh, over to you now yeah thank you sir thank you for your nice introduction yeah uh, very good morning to uh, all of you today i am going to discuss about uh, one of the important uh, nowadays industry looking uh, the automation technology actually just now i have attended the few minutes back in the anjanel sir program is also actually he has talked about the automation uh, one of the uh, person is asking how we will minimize the labor okay how utilize so actually in nowadays you can see in agriculture or you can go any industry what will happen the labor problem is there how we can rectify that problem when you come to this type of questions generally we are going to discuss about now the india we are going to going little bit forward motion we are going to in the place of where human it is not available in that places we are going to use utilize some type of robots it may be uh, it may be industrial manipulator or it may be uh, humanoid robots or it may be uh, wheel robots that depends upon you can use drones that depends upon your uses uh, when you come to today's my talk you can see how the industry is there uh, i think uh, you can see when you go for in our industry when uh, year of 1800 uh, you can see how the industry is working in the 1800 year the industry how it is working it is a mechanization how we are going to run our machines we are going to run our machines by using our water and steam powers then come to we have upgraded in in the year of 1900 there we came to industry 2.0 here what will happen the electrical power we came to uh, know then we have utilized the electrical power then by using electrical power we have utilized the mass production then we have used the assembly lines also then come to into year of 2000 the one of the the platform it came robotics technology here what will happen where we have used human in the place of human we are going to use this uh, human uh, this robot then robot what it will do whatever the task is going to done by human being it is doing the particular task in 2000 year and when you come to in industry 4.0 it is a cyber physical system here what will happen when we are going to our mission is uh, going to shut down and uh, how many days it will work and what are the problems are there what is the raw material and how many days it will come these are all the things we are working on industry 4.0 and coming to here uh, industry 4.0 now actually our all industries they are moving into industry 4.0 here what is going to use the hello sorry to interrupt you sir sir uh, the slides are not getting changed still it is in the first slide okay i mean the full screen is not shared sir only now this... yeah 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 now it's done sir thank you thank you when you come to see the industry uh, 5.0 here what will happen we are going to use the human robot collaboration nowadays you can see so many uh, people they are using in industry there is a cobots the cobots the main advantage of the cobot is that you can as a human can also work along with the robot 
but when you come to the industrial robotic manipulator human cannot work along with the robot why because the basic difference is that the robot it consists of their own sensors and it can be think like a human being but in the when you come to industrial manipulator here what will happen here there is no sensor but the robot cannot identify if any person is coming to in between when it is going to do some task like then coming to you can see here how the the robots versus productivity how it is uh, moving the industrial when we are going to use the lot of robots in industry what will happen see when you come to in the 19th 17 1970 year the high flex when the generally all the industries they are using the human uh, human power human man power they are using and here what will happen there is a flexibility but limited productivity flexibility in the sense suppose if the person they cannot they they are interested to change the product design they can change by hand immediately but the productivity the productivity when they come to productivity we can talk it it is a limited productivity when come to the complete robotic that is industry 3.0 when you come to industry 3 0.0 what will happen here we are getting the productivity is more and the flexibility is less why because robot cannot take the decision immediately see as a human being we have our own intelligence we can take the decision we can change the product configuration and product dimension also we can change but when you come to the robot robot cannot change how the robot will work generally when you go for any robot we need to do some programming knowledge okay here what will happen here the flexibility is less because if you want to change something you need to stop you need to stop your complete mission and you need to change your program and again you need to update it and when you go for high productivity see what will happen the same type of product you are going to manufacturing now suppose when you compare with the human manpower when you compare with the robot robot can provide the number of products per day it will be increase and when you come to the human robot collaboration that is industry 4.0 here what will happen when you come to industry 4.0 you can flexibility is available and at the same time productivity also how the flexibility will get it how the product productivity already we understand when generally what will happen robot can do more better than human being and it will give more products per day when you come to flexibility why because if you want to do some flexibility what will happen here human is also there along with the robot he is collaborating with the robot he is collaborating with the robot wherever you need flexibility wherever you want to change the product design immediately you can change by using human help so when you uh, i will show you one video you can see how the industry is changing see when we have started the industry this is the raw material is coming on the conveyor the sheets are coming see how they are cutting they are using some our mechanical machines like punching machine they are using to cut the sheets and slowly they are going to see how the industry is you can see in this picture here there is a one car manufacturing company see when you before the robots the people how they are working in the industry they manually they are going and they are keeping and all the parts and they are assembling but when you come to this robotics technology what will happen the robots are building the complete car manufacturing you can see here how the robots are doing welding operation and see how we are going to do the painting operation how the robots see this type of operation generally what will happen if you go for as a man power or maybe if you go or involve any human being what will happen it will take time process and at the same time you cannot get that much accuracy that's why nowadays all industries what they are going to do slowly they are going to updating their things this is a one of the video you can see how the industry the changing then when you come to talk about what is this robot when you come to talk about i am going to discuss about the few basic terms of the robot see generally the robot came it is there in 1921 you can see here is the term robot it is came in 1921 by carol kapak he was introduced the 1921 carol kapak was introduced and it is the first uh, word that is coming from sage word and the first name it is call it as a robota it is a robota when you call the robota means it is a forced or slave labor that means it is it can also work like a human being in coming to the 1921 you can see here 1921 uh, according to his perception carol kapak he is telling that uh, he is a play, play, play writer in the or uh, uh, <clears throat> sage play writer and he has written a drama this name rosam's universal robot he has used this term and coming to according to his perception it is 
uh, robot, it looks like a human being and it can uh, work uh, whatever the task we have provided to human being, it can work. And if the first robot we are going to develop, that was developed by George Dovell in 1954. The name it called the Unimate robot. See, this is the one of the first robot has developed in 1954. They are going to using for casting application, die casting application. They are going to use. And when you come to this uh, robot, the what is robot? See, generally, when you come to the definition of the robot, it is a reprogrammable robot. It is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator um, designed to move materials, parts, tools, or specialized device through variable program motions of the performance. See, it is a reprogrammable. See, when you are going to develop any robot, it should be a reprogrammable. If it is a not reprogrammable, we can utilize for only some particular task. It is only for some particular task we can utilize. But here, what will happen? The robot itself is a reprogrammable. We can do multifunctional. Multi, we can do the number of tasks and which will we are going to use for to uh, move the materials, parts, tools are various specialized device like your medical devices your needles you can use various special device and through variable program motions maybe it depends upon sometimes you want to move without industry sometimes you want to move in industry there are so many objects are there so many machines are there so many human beings are there you can move along with the human beings also variable program motions for the performance of variety of tasks this is the definition uh, we have given the robot then coming to the uh, why robots require. See, when we are going to discuss about the robots, why it is important. See, I already told you, nowadays you can go for any industry, what will happen? Uh, there is a manpower, there is a loss of manpower. Okay. And second thing is that when you are going to use the human being manpower and, and when you are going to use the robot, there is a lot of change in the product design and product accuracy, precision. See, when you come to robot can build performance capability superior to those of human beings. Suppose if you are going to develop any type of product, when you compare with the as a human being, when you compare with the robot, the performance of the robot, okay, the performance of the robot, it is superior than human being. Why? Because when you are going to work on human being, we cannot develop, we can as a human being, we cannot develop that much accuracy, we cannot develop that much precision also. Why? Because it is a robot. Robot, it is working by using a programming. It can work according to whatever the dimension you have given. But we cannot develop as a human being that much 100% accuracy. We can develop maybe 99%, but we cannot develop 100% accuracy. And when you come to here, see, robots are better than humans to perform simple and repetitive tasks with better quality and consistency. See, what will happen when you're going to discuss about these robots? These are the better than humans for simple repetitive. When you come to simple repetitive task means, suppose if you want to do the pick and place operation, see, or if you want to do the some painting operation, if you want to do the welding operation, see some of the robots, what will happen from morning to evening, it is the robot task is to do only pick and place operation. This type of pick and place operation, we can, as a human being, what will happen? He can do, he can do, but he cannot maintain that much consistency, that much quality. Why? Because he may feel bored. When you come to see, robots do not have limitations and negative attributes of human works. See, when, when, when we are as a human being is working in the industry, what will happen? They have some limitations. Why? Because we are all seeing nowadays, actually the industries, they are working on three shifts, like eight hours per. Okay. See, one shift is eight hours. That means he has some limitation. Each human being, the band power, they can work only up to eight hours. In the eight hours also, again, there is a uh, break. Again, there is a tea break. There is a lunch break. Sometimes they will call it. When you are going to work on the board, there is no limitation. There is no limitation and they cannot, they can work continuously. And one more problem is that the limitation means you can go. See, some of the robots work as a human being, sometimes will happen. They cannot work depends upon the temperature of the machine, depends upon the temperature of the uh, where we are working the task. But robot don't have any robot can work any type of temperature depends upon how you, you have manufactured, what type of material you are using. That depends. It can go there, it can work. And coming to the negative attribute, robot cannot create any harmful to the any human being. But generally what would happen as a human being, we can do. Robots are used in industries to save the time compared to human beings. Why? Because as a human being, we are developing a product for a day. It is suppose 100. When you are going to 
use the robots, it may develop the products per day, maybe 10,000 or 1 lakh. Robots are in value-poor working condition, like in thermal power plants, like in nuclear power plants. Robots can go there, it can work. But it has human beings, we cannot go there, we cannot work. It may harmful to the our health and it may be risk of the life of the human being also. Robots also work in improved working conditions and reduces. See, because of these all, when you're going to utilize the robot in the industry, what will happen? It will improve the working condition, improve the working conditions. It will improve the product quality. It will improve the, uh, the uh, high product number of products will be increased. And at the same time, accuracy will be increased. And at the same time, uh, quality will be increased. Precision will also increase. And also, we will reduce the risk when you're going to utilize the robots instead of human beings. See, this is the one of the robotic system. You can see how this robotic system can work. See, general robotic system consists of there is a manipulator. We call it as a when they have developed the robot initially, they have called it as a manipulator. When you are going to think about the manipulator, manipulator it look like a, your human being arm. You just think about how our human being arm is working, like from shoulder joint, like elbow joint, like wrist joint, how it is working. See, when you come to the shoulder joint, okay, and when you come to the elbow joint, when you come to the wrist joint, we are doing some motion. We are doing some motion. It may be uh, rolling motion or it may be arm motion or it may be pitch motion we are going to do. In the similar manner, the robot is also consists of, the robot is also consists of the number of links and number of joints. The number of links and number of joints. Here, what will happen, robot, as a human being, we have our own joints we have our own joints that's why we are rotating our arms but robot don't have our own joints we are going to design the joint we are going to develop the joint what type of joint what type of motion you require what where your robot is going to work that depends upon your utility that depends upon your usage you need to design your joint it may be you are going to rotate you are going to revolute joint you require or it may be you need Linear motion, that means prismatic joint you require, that depends upon usage you need to do. And how this joint is working. See, when you are going to these uh, joints are working based upon your whatever the actuator you are going to provide. I already told you, robot consists of number of links and number of joints. But here the joint, it may work when you are going to add the actuator. When you come to the actuator, here there are varieties of actuators are available. When you go to the industry, See, there is a electrical activators are available and you can go for pneumatic activators are available. You can go for hydraulic activators available. That depends upon how much load, payload you are going to carry. If you are going to carry 1 kg, 2 kg, you can go for electrical activator. If you are going to go for maybe tons, okay, then you go for either pneumatic or hydraulic activator. But there is a limitation, pneumatic and hydraulic activator, there is a limitation when you compare with the electrical activator. Then see how this robotic joints are working here. See, when you come to see how the robot knows, how the robot knows I want to do some work. See, what we are going to do, we are going to write the programming and we are going to uh, up uploading our programming to the controller. The controller will send the signals to the driver unit. All these uh, actuators are connected with the driver unit. Then this controller would send the signal to the driver unit. Then driver unit will pass the information to the giant, how much you want to rotate, how much, what type of task you are going to do. See, this is the complete robotic system. It consists of the components. One is the base and one is the joint and link. And you can see the drive unit and you can see the controller. And you can see here, there is an end effector. End effector, there is a gripper. See what this end effector will do. See, when you talk about the end effector, when you compare with the human arm, see, as a human being, we have only wrist joint. You just forget about our fingers and all the things. The fingers and all the, whatever the five fingers we have there, that five fingers, we are going to think of the one gripper. You see, that means we are going to attach our gripper. We are going to attach our gripper at the end effector. That wrist position we are going to attach. And one more thing, if you are going to mount any sensor, if you are going to mount any sensor, you just mount the sensor at the end of the gripper or it may be you can uh, attach the sensor each joint of the robotic arm also. Then what will happen? The sensor can identify the information and it will pass to the information to the controller. What sensor will do? Sensor generally what will it will take the input from the environment and it will pass to the information that it will send to the information to the controller. Then controller will take the decision. This is the complete robotic system.
then coming to the what are the essential characteristics for the robots see when we are working on the robot in industry when we are working a robot in industry what the things required the essential character the first thing is that your robot should be sense okay whatever the robot we are using the robot can be capable to sense it see as a human being we are sensing how we are sensing we have our own sensors when you come to our own sensor you can see how we are seeing by using our eyes how we are smelling by using our nose like ear like our skin we have our sensor what we are doing by sensor what will happen we are taking the information and that information we are sending to the our brain then brain it will brain what would it will take the it will process it whatever the data we are sending by using seeing by using smelling by using hearing we are whatever the data we are sending to the brain the brain will be process it and it will give the decision immediately in the similar manner our robot can also it can be capable to sense it can be capable to sense see what are the objects are there any human being is there and any another robot is there any mission is there where i am working this it should it should be capable to sense it how it will sense we need to provide the sensor we need to provide the sensor what type of sensors that depends upon what environment you are using you need uh, maybe proximity sensor it may be you are going to ir sensor if you are going to use the ultrasonic sensor if you are going to provide limit switches that depends upon utilization you need to provide the there are so many sensor available in the market that depends upon usage where you are working about the the gripper is working the what type of gripper you are using you are going to use the magnetic gripper or you are going to use the any vacuum gripper that depends upon how much force actually some of the grippers what will happen when you are going to uh, pick and place operation when you go sometimes we are going to deal with the metal objects sometimes we are going to deal with the very thin parts also like light objects like you can go for your bulb egg this type of how we are going to handle with this type of objects that's why your robot can be capable to sense it what type of object i am going to uh, gripping and what uh, what type of environment is there what are the objects it can be capable to sense it when the robot can be sense it what will happen we are trying to minimize the accidents we are trying to minimize the accidents and it may be good for robot it may be good for to the opposite maybe human being or another mission also then come to the second essential character your robot can be capable to move see here most of the industries what will happen sometimes what will happen in industry we are going to use the fixed robot fixed robot when you are going to work on the fixed robot what will happen robot will be fixed in one place but robot cannot move entire industry but whether your robot can be capable to move the entire industry then how you are going to provide the moment for your robot whether you are going to attach any railing moment at the bottom of the robot or whether you are going to attach any wheel mechanism or whether we are going to provide any leg mechanism that type of moment why because when the robot is moving throughout the industry we can utilize depends upon our task we can utilize the robot and throughout the entire environment it can be easily capable to move then third one is the energy when you are going to deal with the robots when you are going to deal with the robots what will happen we are going to provide some actuators why otherwise it cannot move it may be electrical or it may be hydraulic or it may be pneumatic actuators we are going to provide see when you come to the electrical actuator suppose we are going to industry we are going to use the electrical actuator how we are these electrical actuators are moving whether you are going to provide what type of energy you are provide you are going to provide the direct power why because as a human being we need to take the food to do the work but robot there is no food how up to how much you are providing the electrical power that means energy you are providing it can work continuously without any rest but how we sometimes what will happen some of the cases we may provide it is possible to provide maybe direct power some of the cases it may not possible to provide direct power you can go for any battery operated what type of battery operated power you are going to utilize it this is coming to energy then coming to the intelligence see i already told uh, as a human being we have our own intelligence but how robot can take the decision we need to provide how the robot can take the take the decision we need to provide some intelligence how the intelligence will come when you assign when you assign all these sensors when you assign all these sensor robot can take the decision robot can take the decision what will happen when you attach the sensor the all the surrounding environment it will grab the input and it will send the signals to the control the controller you can behave like a intelligent robot the controller will take the decision immediately according to the input of the sensor then this intelligence 
then coming to you can see here the advantages of the robots see most of the industries they are using these robots like uh, vehicles and car factories when you are going to manufacturing your vehicles or it may be cars or trolleys trucks and all the things and uh, mounting circuit on electronic device when you go for your uh, computer motherboard or it may be mobile motherboard see how much the components are there uh, you try to see what is the size of the, your capacitor and how, what is the size of your chip okay and the resistor is there how the welding is going and sorry how they are doing the soldering operation they are doing okay it is very difficult by using a human being nowadays you can see there is a nano boards micro boards okay it is very difficult earlier you can see the tv what is the size now the what is the size of the tv see because what will happen the robot can do robot can do this soldering operation and robot can mount the electronic device on the the small nano chip board also this is the one of the application they are using and work where there might be danger see here what one of the thing is that where the nuclear uh, leaks and maybe where the bomb disposable as if you are going to send a human being he, he may die and surgeons the most of the nowadays you can see most of the operations the people they are trying to the doctors also they are going to try to do by using robotic surgery why it is required robotic surgery when you talk about the robotic surgery as a human being actually now earlier they actually as a doctor is doing the surgery but what will happen suppose doctor want to do heart operation earlier how they are doing the heart operation at least the doctor need to cut our body minimum 10 cm distance he want to cut minimum 10 cm and maximum in the market it is available that is the robotic technology they are going just simply there is small hole by using that hole robot can inject whatever the things required it can insert it inside and it can do the surgery the like uh, he implant if you want to do any implants okay these all the things they are going to do by robots only and one more thing what will happen the advantage of the robotic the in the surgery and uh, the medical application the robot advantage is that as a doctor he cannot do that much consistent he may that much accuracy he cannot do but when you are going to use the robot robot only you need to give the program suppose you are going to give the program you just move only 0.05 mm robot will move only 0.05 mm but as a human being our arm it cannot move 0.05 mm. okay that much accuracy we cannot get it and when you come to the mail delivery system like uh, when you are going to give like amazon nowadays it is working the how the parcels we need to deliver to the customers without human being okay this is the one of the application they are working on toy robots you can for entertaining the kids you can develop the toy robots and the robots do not get bored or tired and it can work 24 by 7 without any salary and food when you come to the disadvantages you can see it needs high supply of power why because we need to provide continuous power without power robot cannot work and the people can lose the jobs in factories see generally people will tell they can lose the jobs but actually nowadays actually we are facing already we have less manpower in india it needs maintenance to keep its running why because we need to do maintenance to keep it continuous running through the years and it's a cost a lot of money make to buy when you are going to purchase initially the cost of the robot is very high expensive it is very high expensive and robot cannot respond time of danger as a human can suppose any fire accident is happen robot cannot respond okay if anything is happen danger in in the factory robot cannot respond but as a human being we can respond these are the disadvantages when you come to the robot programming methods you can see there are uh, some of the programming methods still the industries they are using one is the method is most popular method is the teach pendant method see here what will happen you can see the picture easily you can understand here this is the one of the robot and this is your teach pendant here what will happen we need to teach how we need to teach each and every joint of the robotic arm and how we will teach suppose if you want to do the welding operation initially if you want to do the welding operation where we are going to do the welding operation what is the length of the welding operation we are going to do what are the two metal pieces are available okay in that location first we need to do manually by joystick we are moving by joystick we are moving the end effector the end point why because in the end effector we are going to attach our welding tool 
there we just move it on the one pass first we need to one pass by using your joystick when we are moving the robot along with the welding where we are going to do the welding what will happen this stitch pendant each joint coordinates what is the first location it is going and what is the position of the uh, arm what is the position of the arm position of the arm means how all the joints are rotating what is the first joint is rotating how much angle is rotating the second joint how much joint angle it is rotating and third joint how much all the joint positions it is stored into this control memory it is stored into the this stitch pendant control memory it will store it once you have stored all the data then you can convert it as a programming you can convert it as a programmer and some of the drag and drop items will also available and and you can also utilize this stitch pendant and what is the current you are going to supply and what is the amplitude you require and what is the speed and feed you are going to provide the wire when you are going to do the welding operation see by using this stitch pendant we can teach each and every joint of the coordinate frame of the robot and that all the joints data it can be stored in the teach pendant and it can convert as a programming and you can utilize it and this is the one of the most uh, method that people are using in industry all industrial uh, manipulator they are using then coming to the lead through method here what will happen lead through method see actually this was earlier they have used but still they are using some uh, painting robots and here what will happen in the earlier we have used the teach pendant by using teach pendant we have teach the we have stored the all the giant coordinates but here as a human being we need to touch the robot we need to move the robot according to your whatever the task you are going to do suppose if you want to write the letter a you want to show how to write the letter a first then when you are going to write the letter a what will happen according to whatever you are writing whatever the slanting line sloping is uh, a sloping line we are going to write it both the sides right and left side and you, how you are writing slipping line in the a symbol and all the giant coordinates to store the their angles all the giant these joints will be stored the your coordinates and then once it is completed then it will do the same task once it is completed it can do same task by using by utilizing the previous giant coordinates whatever the stored giant coordinates are there by utilizing that one it can do it see what the, uh, the problem is that here you suppose if you want to change if you want to change the letter a to and letter b then again you need to teach it that means you need to last the complete the previous program and you need to store the new program by using teaching this is the drawback of this lead through method and when you come to this uh, teach pendant you can change your program but once the first program is completed then second pro program you can like how you are written your uh, c language programming you can write in the script also here then come to there is a one more method is the offline programming as a mechanical engineer we all know about the computer aided design how we are going to draw the cad okay see when you are going to the here cad what will happen we initially when we are going to develop any model when you are going to develop any model in real time we need to do some practice the simulation we need to do some simulation how we will do simulation first we need to design according to the size of the product and we need to do the simulation in the similar manner here also whatever the robot you you are going to operate in the real time the same type of robot the cad model you can develop in the cad you can develop in the cad and you just write the programming how we are writing our uh, cnc programming how we are using our g09 g codes and m codes in the similar manner uh, you can write the programming and you can generate the programming also you can generate the programming by using this cad model then what will happen according to this cad model your robot can move your robot can move and it can do some particular task also the main advantage is that this cad model it can reduce down reduce the down time for programming the main advantage is that what will happen when you are going to change the programming if you want to change the programming here what will happen previous only you can change it and you can just once the task is completed or in between if you want to change you can change immediately only the whatever the your code you have generated that code you can change it this is the one of the advantage by using this offline programming and when you come to talk about the degrees of freedom see when you talk about the robot see i already told the robot it consists of number of links and number of joints yeah, when you are going to talk about the robot when you are going to purchase the robot when you are going to develop the robot first the person need to think about how many degrees of freedom is required 
how many degrees of freedom is required see what is degrees of freedom when you go for the degrees of freedom the number of independent moments that an object can perform in a 3d space is called the degrees of freedom see what will happen here each joint how many motions you required whether you are going to how many motions means you are going to roll motion or you are going to move the pitch and yeah and each joint some maybe sometimes some of the joints you don't require all three motions okay suppose if you are going to move only one motion that you consider as a one degrees of freedom why because when you are going to deal with the robots what will happen each motion we need to attach one motor otherwise it cannot move suppose there is a rolling motion there is a pitch motion there is a motion suppose you have attached the robot in the rolling motion but ro the robot cannot move in the pitch and a motion it will move only rolling motion only it can move only rolling motion only you need to attach suppose uh, three motors one is the rolling motion one is the pitching motion one is the a motion when you talk about the workspace see how much your robot can generate the workspace see when you talk about see you just see you just fully stretch your arm your as a human being you have your own hand that you call it as a robotic arm you just fully stretch it and you just see the end point of your arm end point of your arm see the arm is capable to operating see the end point of the robotic arm is capable to operating in a cuboid space okay that we call it as a workspace that means whatever the end point of the arm can be capable to move in a cuboidal space or not if it is capable to move we can call it as a that will be a workspace and when you come to the the volume of work volume the volume of space how much space it is going to sweep by using your end effector that means how much area it is covering the completely that we call it as a your work volume then when you are going to discuss about this workspace geometry we are going to talk about there are two type of terms one is the reachable workspace and second one is the dexterous workspace the reachable workspace you can see here the volume see the space with which every point can be reached see every point means suppose you are going to keep you are going to keep your object in somewhere see what will happen the end effector to reach that position the robot want to reach your the object the robot want to reach the object how many orientation it is moving if it is moving at least one orientation or it may be move there are number of orientation suppose best example is that your robot is on your table and your object is the bottom and what are the possible ways to reach that object it may be sometimes the robot can reach only one orientation that we call it as a reachable workspace and sometimes there is number of orientations are possible that we call it as a dexterous workspace these are the some of the fundamental terms when we are going to deal with the uh, robots we need to understand what is the reachable workspace and coming to the end effector see up to now i have discussed it. you can see the end of the robotic arm we need to attach okay the end of the robotic arm means like our wrist position like our wrist position okay here only we are going to attach the your gripper see the end effector is usually attached to the robot wrist it allows the robot to accomplish a specific task why because when you assign when you attach when you attach any end effector it may be gripper the end effector you can call it as a generally there are two types it may be one is the gripper or it may be tool suppose the gripper we are going to use for to grasping the object to grasp the object for picking and placing somewhere you can go for grippers there are various types of grippers like mechanical grippers are available electrical grippers are available you can go for vacuum grippers are available like magnetic grippers suppose if you want to move the mild steel material you can go for magnetic magnetic grippers and there are some adhesive grippers also suppose if you want to hold it by like our needles needle size is very less okay that the diameter is very small it is very difficult to handle by using mechanical gripper and electrical gripper and vacuum gripper you just go for adhesives adhesive gripper also we can utilize then coming to the tools you can see here the tools whatever the task you want to do what type of task you are going to do whether you are going to do the welding object or whether you are going to do the painting or whether you are going to do some assembly or whether you are going to do some riveting operation that depends upon or you are going to cutting that depends upon operation what type of operation you are going to do that depends upon operation you want to change your tool that's why initially only i have given the definition it is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator 
it is not for only one operation the robot whatever we are going to develop or whenever we are going to purchase it is not only fulfill in one task we can do the different types of tasks we can change our programming according to our we can uh, change it the programming according to our uses according to our uses we can change it you can see here in the picture there are some types of grippers are available these are the mechanical gripper and so you can see vacuum gripper and when you come to see here the tools like welding tool is available here and you can see here the cutter and you can see the painting gun these are the tools we have attached this is the end effector and these are the tools we have attached different uh, that depends upon our uses when you come to robot cell layout see when you go for any industry the robot cell layout we are going to utilize okay here see the robot cell layout means it is a complete system including the robot controller and other peripherals see what will happen here the robots are working on the industry and how the process is going on how the robots are helping to the other mission one mission to another mission how it is helping and how it is taking the object on from the raw material and how we are going to finishing the final product see when you discuss about this robot uh, cell layout there are three different types of robot cell layout in industries they are using one is the robot centered work cell see robot centered work cell means here what will happen robot is standing that means it is fixed in one place and all the material whatever the things are moving on the conveyor to the robot and robot will do the specific task coming to the inline robot work cell when you are going to deal with the inline work robot inline robot work cell work cell the robots are also moving along with the along with the conveyor belt along with the conveyor belt coming to the mobile work cell here what will happen robot can move the entire the environment you can see the robot centered cell see how the robot is working see this is your raw material is coming and this is going out whatever the product finished product we are sending to the conveyor the out see the robot will be stand here and it will grab the raw material from the conveyor and it will keep it into the mission one and once the mission one task is completed and it will hold it the object immediately the robot is keeping to the mission two like that robot is doing what we are doing we are changing the raw material from one mission to another mission earlier before robot what we, as a human being he need to change the raw material from one, one mission to another mission but now you can go any industry there is no human being to do this such a type of task they are using only robots then coming to the inline robot work cell you can see here the robots uh, here what will happen there is a conveyor belt all the uh, whatever the work part your whatever the work part your raw material is coming on the conveyor belt and robots are standing here and the conveyor belt the robot whatever the objects whatever the product you are going to design it is coming to the in front of the robot and robot is it may stop sometime and robot is doing particular operation like i have seen the video earlier how the robots are doing welding operation and how to do the painting operation see when it is do welding operation it may stop your programming your return the can your conveyor belt may stop up to 10 seconds or it may be 50 seconds or 100 seconds you need to stop and within the 50 seconds you need to do your particular task you need to do welding operation or if maybe you want to do assembly operation you need to do this is the one of the uh, task the industry they are using what is the inline robot work cell coming to the mobile work cell here see what will happen the robots also moving along with the missions see here they are using some uh, railing movement see here the robots are capable to move various equipments within the cell a mobile base is needed here mobile base means they are using only the uh, railing system and what will happen here the robot will go to the the conveyor belt input input material and it is collecting the input material from the conveyor belt and it will going to place on the mission one once the mission one has task has completed it is changing to the mission two then it is completed then it is going to the out of that means the delivery it is going to give the delivery here what will this uh, these mobile robot work cell there are two types one is the floor mounted and second one is the overhead mounted you can you can keep this type of robots you can maybe uh, mount on the ceilings also and coming to one of the new technology the people they are using this robots in additive manufacturing see when you come to talk about the additive manufacturing we all know about additive manufacturing it is a layer by layer deposition process okay I, well, most of the people they are working on the additive manufacturing it like a pla 
and abs material we have seen the mission setup cost is very less when you go for a deal with the pla and abs the mission cut setup is available 15000 is also market it is available but if you want to deal with instead of pla and abs if you are going to deal with the any metal okay metal additive manufacturing the metal additive manufacturing when you go market the mission the cost of the mission is very costly why because you need to maintain the temperature you need to melt the wire that much temperature it is very costly nowadays what people they are doing instead of buying the metal additive manufacturing um, whatever the metal additive manufacturing if they want to do okay they are going to simply converting this whatever the robotic arm is there they are going to use as a metal additive manufacturing how they will do see as we know the ro uh, robots are doing welding operation instead of we can use the maybe mig welding robot metal inert gas welding robot see how the metal inert gas welding we are going here what will happen there is a wire pool and wire is consuming wire is consuming wire is melting consuming means it is melting here what will happen we are going to maintain we are going to maintain layer by layer deposition with respect to time delay with respect to time delay why because if you apply continuously what will happen the previous whatever the layer it is there it will also melt again then you cannot get that much strength of the object if you want to do you can write by using teach pendant i already told you what or how the programming we are going to deal with this robot see when you are going to deal with this type of robots we are going to use the teach pendant in the teach pendant we can right how much delay you require also you can mention how much delay you require and how much current you are going to apply and how much speed you want to the wire consume the most one of the application people they are using these robots in additive manufacturing applications and you can see how the layer by layer deposition they are doing how the layer by layer you can see the robot is doing in industry the layer by layer the main advantage of this layer by layer deposition metal additive manufacturing suppose some of the components we cannot possible to reproduce again that type of it may be wear and tear some of the objects what will happen after few years it may be wear but it is very difficult to reproduce what will do how much layer you require where it is weighed exactly we need to do by using this layer by layer deposition and coming to some of the application you can see uh, as i discussed up to now robots using uh, different types of manufacturing applications you can go for any industry uh, most of the industries they are going to converting as a this manufacturing uh, this robots as a manufacturing and you can see robots are being used in many aspects in manufacturing help to increase productivity and efficiency while lowering production cost and nowadays people are using collaborative robots why because human can also interact with the robots human can also use his decision in between uh, when you are going to change any flexibility if you want to change you can utilize the flexibility also that's a human collaborate that that we call it as a cobots cobots also they are using and coming to one of the application uh, they are using agriculture applications see uh, as we discussed so uh, nowadays actual what will happen most of the farmers they are facing about the the less labor why because labor cost labor less labor is available then what will happen the labor cost is increasing why because they are demanding more cost then what will happen the cost is increasing the farmers are not interested to work they are not interested to cultivate their lands why because how they will get the profit we need to use some new technologies like you need to use this robotic technology some of the applications like if you want to spray pesticides if you want to uh cut the your uh, fruits or if you want to plucking your uh, fruits or vegetables and if you want to identify the diseases and you can go for like bullock carts area they have you to okay now they, you can go for tractors even though tractors also you can go for driverless tractors these all under coming into the this robotics technology and coming to healthcare applications i already discussed how the doctor is going to do the surgery operation with uh, sometimes what will happen some of the operation it is not possible to do by the doctor is not available in the same place maybe doctor is in some place but robot is available the doctor can control the robot from his own place and he can do the surgery operation by you seeing your all the compute by using vision system he can see what is how the robot is operating by using your computer screen and he can do the operation also then coming to the food preparation you can go for uh, some of the 
uh, applications in the robotics technology uh, nowadays actually people are thinking about how we are going to develop the food by using robot why because people they don't want to interest to cook their food also they don't have time due to this busy uh, jobs and schedules they want to make the food also there you have seen earlier actually in our houses there is no washing machine and uh, there is a utensils cleaning machine now all the things are came in every place slowly people they are using the cleaning robot home cleaning robot floor cleaning robots and they are thinking about the how the robots can make the food how it can take the person if they are in uh, we started from their company night time he can do the these are the food i need then if the robot can make the food when reach the home this is the one of the food preparation technology they are using and that's all and you can utilize so many application when you want to work robot is not a manipulator it can go for like a, a medical application like army application like defense application you can go for and you can go for develop a, any type of humanoid robot it can mimic different type of actions where human cannot be suppose there is a human being if he want to move there but it cannot be possible that type of places we can send human type of robot and people can work on the legged ro like uh, wheel robots and there is a one drawback for wheel robots and legged robots a uh, wheel robots it can move only on the flat surface but legged robots it can move on any type of terrain it may be it can move on the stairs it may be it can move on the ditches it can move on the any stones are available legged robots can move. that's why nowadays people they are mostly interested to work on the these legged robots yeah thank you sir yeah any questions any questions from the participants good morning sir how good morning. i have a small uh, clarification sir mm. my my name is uh, dr kondai sir i am a professor in mechanical engineering i am in manufacturing field so i like the application that you have shown about uh, additive manufacturing being uh, additive manufacturing being conducted by a robot yes sir uh, sir is it uh, uh, the example you have shown is metal additive manufacturing so under what category it comes uh, is it powder based or wire based yeah yeah I, I sir, just... uh, sir first of all uh, uh, thank you actually for a long time i think i have uh, discussion with you uh, actually i have discussed here it is a metal uh, metal that means we can not use powder here we can use by using wire wire arc additive manufacturing i have shown hello hello my voice is audible hello audible sir ha ha we are i have shown the example here it is a wire arc additive manufacturing I think Pandey sir, voice is not audible. It's in the connection. Pandey sir. Ah yes sir yes sir it's also audible now. Huh huh. i have discussed here it is wire arc additive manufacturing why because when we are going to do the mig welding operation we are using the wire okay okay ha uh, suppose if you want to if you if we want to implement any powder we can make some uh, setup the beside of the uh, wire and we can apply some nano powder types also but there is a extra setup we need to attach and the extra setup again the speed and feed also we need to control it okay sir okay, okay. 
sir is it is it uh, comparable with the regular metal ready to manufacturing uh, uh, when you go for, uh, when you go for compare uh, there is a some gap is there gap means we cannot i cannot tell 100% you will get like that but we can achieve at least uh, 90% okay okay so when you go so for metal ready to metal ready to manufacturing mission it is cross when you go for this uh, robot make welding mission it is in 25 lakhs we get maybe nowadays we will get in uh, maybe 20 lakhs 15 lakhs also okay Sir, sir, any NIT is using this technology, sir? This, as we have discussed, no. Huh? Ha! This, uh, this robot actually uh, in NIT Bhopal it is not there. We are going to floor the this setup, but uh, I think you all people know about Vignan University in Andhra Pradesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ha! Huh. Actually, I worked there in Vignan University in 2018 to 20. That time. We have purchased under me. We have started this work. Okay. It is available. They are giving also like consultancy. If you are in the new industry work, they are doing consultancy also. Vignan University. Oh, right, sir. Got it, sir. Oh.